Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers. I'm Mike, and today we're going to be installing Proxmox 8, and specifically in this video, we'll be using version 8.3. I've made other videos on previous versions, but since I've been away for a while, I figured this is a good place to start, so let's get into it. To do this, you're going to need a USB drive, as well as a separate, dedicated machine to install Proxmox onto. For example, you could use an old computer you have lying around, a Raspberry Pi, server hardware, or you can even build a PC specifically for this if you have certain needs. In our case, it's going to be a mini PC that I picked up from a local e-waste recycler and refurbished. So what is Proxmox? Proxmox is a free, open source hypervisor platform based off of Debian Linux. It has its pros and cons as you become more familiar with virtualization, but I prefer it over VMware or Hyper-V even in my own production environments. This is because it does most of, if not more than, what other hypervisor platforms can do without expensive licensing costs. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to do is go to the Proxmox website and find the downloads. As usual, all links will be in the description. Here we'll click on the download for the current version of Proxmox VE, or Virtual Environment, and wait for it to download. While you're waiting on that download, if you don't already have it, you'll need to download a program to write that ISO onto the flash drive. I like to use Rufus. Again, the link to this will be in the description. So go here, scroll all the way down, and then grab the current version executable and you should be able to run that as is. So now that the download is complete, we'll go ahead and insert our USB drive and open up Rufus. Make sure that the device up here is the correct one. Everything on this drive will be deleted, so make sure that there's no important data on there that you need to back up beforehand. Now go to Select, and find the Proxmox ISO that we just downloaded, and then open it. You'll get this message saying that it will be written in DD image mode. Go ahead and click OK on that. And from here, you shouldn't have to change any more of the settings. Just go ahead and click Start. Click OK to acknowledge the drive will be overwritten. And then wait until the drive is done. Once the drive is done flashing, go ahead and pull it out and put it into the machine that you want to install Proxmox onto. So now we're on the machine that will be our Proxmox host. Follow your manufacturer's directions to enter the boot menu. For us, that's going to be F9, and then select and boot from the flash drive. Select Proxmox at the top, and then wait a bit for it to load into the installation environment. When we get to this screen, go ahead and select Agree on the bottom right. So here is where we'll select which disk to install Proxmox onto. If you're setting up a ZFS pool for the installation, you'll set that up under the options here. You can also select XFS or BTRFS, if either of those are your preference. But for now, I'll be going with EXT4. Also, I believe it's worth mentioning that ZFS doesn't support hardware RAID, so if you want to use ZFS, you'll have to put your HPA or RAID card into pass-through or IT mode, provided the manufacturer firmware allows it. For now, I just have the one drive in my computer, so I'll make sure that's selected and then click Next. Here we'll set up country, time zone, and keyboard layout. Make sure those are set appropriately, and then click Next. Go ahead and set up a password. I'm not configuring email alerts just yet, so I'll go down here and then change this .invalid to .com, and then proceed to the next step. Here we'll adjust the network settings for our Proxmox machine. It'll ask for the full host name. I'm not joining any domain, so I'll just set mine to pve01.local. By default, Proxmox doesn't have DHCP enabled. The address it pulls will be from DHCP, but it's generally best practice to set a static IP address outside of the DHCP range. If you're just starting out and don't know much about networking, you can leave all of this the same. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a static IP address of 192.168.0.10. Gateway and DNS are the same, and then I'll click Next. Here we'll review everything and make sure that it looks good. Make sure this automatically reboot after successful installation box is checked, and then click Install. This part might take a while, so I'll be back after the installation is complete and the computer has booted into Proxmox. After the install is complete, you should boot up to a screen that looks like this. There's a link at the top, which is what we will use to connect to the web interface of our server. So let's head back to our desktop. So back at our desktop, go ahead and open up a browser. And then we'll type in the link that was displayed earlier exactly as it was shown. In my case, that is https colon slash slash 192. 
port 8006. You'll get a warning that the connection is not private. This is normal. Just go ahead and click on advanced and then continue. For the username, you'll enter root and then the password will be the password we set during the installation. When you log in, you'll get this banner that says you don't have a valid subscription. You can just ignore that for now and we'll get back to that. So now we're in the Proxmox web interface. There are a lot of things here and it can be a little overwhelming if you're not used to it. So let's go ahead and start in the top left up here. There's a drop down menu that you can use to change the logical view of your infrastructure. I prefer the default server view, so I'll leave that alone for now. Underneath that, you'll see your data center. Here is where you can view the global settings for all of your Proxmox nodes. A node here is referring to an individual physical machine that's running Proxmox. The only node that we have right now is the one that we just created, so let's click on that. If you navigate over to Summary, you can see some useful information about your system, including resource utilization, hardware information, disk space usage, Proxmox version, and a few other useful things. Now if you look here, you'll see that the available hard drive space is about 94 gigabytes. However, I have a 1 terabyte drive in this machine, so we need to make all of that available to the Proxmox host. Moreover, if we tried to create a virtual machine on this drive, we wouldn't be able to, so we'll need to address that as well. The way Proxmox is intended to be installed and used is with the actual installation of Proxmox residing on one disk, and then additional disks on the machine being used for storage. By default, Proxmox creates a separate partition from the Proxmox installation for the disks of virtual machines and containers to be stored on. This is fine if you're running server hardware or a desktop with multiple drive bays, but if you're using an old laptop, or in our case a mini PC with limited room for extra drives, we'll want to make use of the entirety of the one drive we have, rather than have parts of it be restricted for certain types of data. So if we go up to our node, and then click the arrow on the left to expand the submenu, we can see the storage that is attached to this node. That is local and local-lvm. And as you can see, Local is only allowed to store backups, ISOs, and container templates, while local LVM is only allowed to store virtual machine disks and container volumes. This is fine, and we could leave this alone, as it's usable in its current configuration. However, I would prefer to have the entire disk available to store all types of data. So the first thing that we're going to do is delete local-LVM. You can do that by going to Data Center and then selecting Storage. From there, click on local-LVM and then Remove. Click yes. Now that we've removed that, go back to your node, and we're going to need to run a few commands in the command line. Go ahead and click on shell to open up a terminal. And I'll be sure to add any commands that I'm about to use down in the description. So the first command is going to be lv remove slash dev slash pve slash data y for yes and then lv resize dash L plus 100 percent free slash dev slash PVE slash root and then one more command resize to FS slash dev slash mapper slash PVE dash root and now if you go back to your local storage you can see that the entire drive is available and now we need to make one more configuration change to the storage so go up to data center and then go to storage, click on your local storage and edit. And here under content, there's a drop down menu. Make sure that all of these options are selected. Hit OK. And you should be able to store all types of data on this drive now. All right, so now our node is configured and ready to get started building our home lab. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the other content on my channel as I have a few tutorials for Proxmox and I plan on making more. If you have any questions, run into any issues, or if you have any ideas for videos you would like to see in the future, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video.